begin this half an hour with Dollar General, the king of rural America. While stores like Sears and Toys R Us are shutting their doors, Dollar General is expanding. The company opened up a record 1,315 stores in 2017. So what does Dollar General's booming success say about the state of the retail sector and the American consumer? Cal Turner Jr. is with us. He's the former Dollar General CEO, and he is the author of the new book, my Father's Business, The Small Town Values That Built Dollar General Into a Billion Dollar Company. It is great to see you, Cal. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, us. Maria. So what, what is it about Dollar General and the small town uh, that you reference in the book that enabled Dollar General to do so well? I can tell you what it was. I'm retired. But it was the small town roots of that company. It was understanding the customer. Because we came from the customer base. We, we know and love the people that come into the Dollar General store. Do the, do the retailers today understand the customer that you refer to? Because today, and, and this is just a quarterly thing, obviously, we've got earnings out for Target and Lowe's and Tiffany, and it's a very different story. Tiffany's doing very well. The stock is going to open at an all-time high, and Lowe's is down sharply because of missed earnings expectations. So characterize the environment of today, if you will. Well, I hope retailers know the customer because they'll do better if they do. I think it's a matter of staying in touch with the customer and learning how the customer might be changing or what's going on in the market or what is the need of the customer that might be different today. Can you talk? Cal, well, Cal, I just want to point out for people that don't know Dollar General, Dollar General goes into small towns where other mainstream <coughs> retailers do not go. They open up in places and serve as a customer base that is not just underserved, but isn't served at all by other major retailers. Like Dollar General will be in a town that Lowe's doesn't even, it's not even on Lowe's map. <laughs> and that's part of their problem. Those small towns have defined Dollar General, Megan. Yeah. We're proud of that. And, and can you talk about that supply chain? How critical is it in operating the business, the supply chain, can, considering you are in small towns and getting the goods in there? It's very critical. And I think that's the edge that Dollar General has because its objective is to be in stock nearby on toilet paper when the customer runs out. <laughs> you don't want to have to get that through the mail. Yeah. And what do you make of the, the, I mean, we're seeing the price of oil go up and, and how sensitive are the Dollar General consumers to, you know, gas prices going up? I used to say about our customer that the Dollar General customer is in a permanent recession and we want to help them with our stores, whatever their need might be. Is that similar to Walmart? Well, we share customers. Yeah. Um, it's interesting how I put that. We share customers with them, but we do. Yep, yep. Well, go ahead. Yeah, one of the things that's interesting, <laughs> when I talk to the landlords for real estate, whether it be Dollar General or any of these other names, the problems that are going on in retail, they tend to blame on the retailers. And when I talk to retailers, they blame it all on the landlords. What do you think of the, the finger pointing that's going on right now in the retail industry in terms of who's at fault for some of the disruption that's going on? The retailer who gets over blame better will do better. <laughs> gets over blame. Blaming yeah. others. You yeah. don't blame others. Yeah. That was an issue between the, the real Cal Turner, my dad, and me. We can't blame people when something goes wrong. Let's get over that. I learned that from my mother, Maria, <laughs> from my mother. <laughs> what Dagan said earlier was interesting because you're going into areas where others aren't really focus and Dollar General's $22 billion market value eclipses the largest U.S. grocery chain, Kroger, which has five times the revenue. What does that say about Dollar General and the secrets to success? Well, it says that if you're out there where the people are meeting their need better, you're going to do better. It's all about the customer. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is about the customer, and and especially it's it's unreal to see how Dollar General has completely separated it from the sort of e-commerce revolution that's happening and disrupting the other retailers. Um, and so, do you think that eventually one day Dollar General will need to set up? A, a sort of a, an omni-channel situation because we're seeing 95 percent of all retail sales happen to companies that have a digital presence as well as an offline presence. 
I think there's always been a revolution going on in retailing, and the one that is currently happening, I have confidence in the management in place in that company now to be on top of but it. But literally, your customer might be less sensitive to gas prices in some way because you are in areas, you're close to the, the people who need just basic goods. So they Absolutely, don't have to drive Megan. they have to drive a lot further to a Walmart than they have to drive to a Dollar General. Number one. And number two, these are communities. I mean we live in highfalutin New York City. <laughs> these are communities that don't even have next day delivery from FedEx. Yeah. You can't yeah. even pay for next day delivery. So when you talk about buying things online that is that's something foreign. It's yeah. a, if I need toilet paper, if I need dishwashing detergent, if I need tissues, it's at the Dollar General, which is half a mile down the road, versus an hour away or saying, by a mail. In the green room, you were you had that statistic, which would be great to share with the audience about the proximity of the stores to the population. Seventy-five percent of the population of the continental United States lives within five miles of a Dollar wow. General store. Yeah. When you run out of the basics, there's a Dollar General store nearby in stock. Mm -hmm. How hard is it to step away from a family business? I mean, this book, My Father's Business, uh, shared, uh, you shared a fascinating story with the world about the, the company, a three-generation run family business, but it eventually would go public. Tell us about that. Well, it was hard for my dad to step away. He didn't. He was there until he died, practically. But my objective was to help that company get the best of its entrepreneurial past, but be professionally managed. Be a great entrepreneurial company. Stay in touch with the customer, but be professionally managed. And walking away was easier for me, of course, mm. than it was for the real. Cal Turner. I'm sure, but it had to be tough for you, too. I mean, a family business, three generations. It is, but if you have a sense of personal mission, you know who you are, and it's not too connected to any organization. Great. Great to have you this morning, Cal. Thank you, Thank Maria. Thank you so much. Cal Turner, Jr., joining us uh, this morning. My Father's Business is the book. Check it out.